All right. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling into today's webinar titled How to Make Sure Your Insurance is Covering Your Meds, Understanding Drug Formularies. My name is Dr. Daniel Hernandez. I am the Medical Advocacy Liaison for Global Healthy Living Foundation. Today, we will talk about the best ways to make sure your medication is covered by your insurance company, and if it's not, what to do to make sure it will be covered. Moreover, we will discuss your ultimate secret weapon. Uh, it's a tool called a formulary, which is a list of medications that your insurance covers. We were joined by Jessica Bowles. She's our patient advocate and community outreach manager for Global Healthy Living Foundation. And she will explain more on this. Hi, Jessica, welcome. Great, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to talk about today's topic. This information can be useful to all patients in navigating and accessing their medication, really no matter where you're at in your treatment journey. So perhaps some of you, maybe even all of you, have gone to your pharmacy and after you've waited online to pick up your medication, the pharmacist says either you'll have to try a different medication than what was originally prescribed, or you'll have to come back since your prescription requires a prior authorization. Maybe even you pick up your medication, but the cost is extremely high, or you're told you need to utilize a specialty pharmacy. And the list goes on, really. So that's why we're here today, to understand how you could potentially be more prepared and better informed for these types of situations beforehand. That sounds great. I know that this is a very important topic to everyone in our community. Uh, we've been speaking to many of you about this over the past weeks, and we're very excited to present this information. Uh, one quick note is that uh, on this webinar, we won't be taking questions, but what we will be doing is at the very end, we will put up our email address and please feel free. Any questions that you have throughout the webinar, send it over to us and we would love to connect with you uh, individually. Um, so let's, let's get to it. But before we get more specific, could you tell us a little bit about how someone listening to this presentation can expect to benefit for, from uh, learning about formularies? Yes, of course. Um, first, let me say that I'm aware that this topic may be a little bit dry and it doesn't sound all too exciting. But what we'll discuss today will take... Um, it will take time out of your schedule, yes. However, the important part is that it will pay off in the long run. Learning this skill will be very valuable. First, it will increase access. If you know how to read your formulary, which we'll discuss in a minute, um, you will be able to have a better conversation with your doctor about medications that are covered under your insurance plan. It doesn't mean you'll have to memorize anything, but if you're able to take a look at your formulary and know what is required in order to start taking that medication, it will be a benefit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. Uh, but second, I want to say it will increase affordability of your medication. As the old expression goes, time is money. Understanding the anticipated cost is extremely important to be prepared in the short term as well as the long term. So there are many financial supports available to patients, but the process begins with understanding the anticipated cost. It will also help you decide if you need to change your insurance to something else that will cover your medications. So today we will teach you how you can learn about where these costs can be found in your formulary. But finally, I want to mention that it will empower you to advocate for yourself and those around you. Knowledge is power. And if you're able to read your formulary and have conversations with your physician, as well as your insurance company, whenever there is a problem, it will empower you to be the most effective patient advocate for yourself. Thanks, Jessica. I'm glad you mentioned the obvious that this is a dry topic, but as you mentioned, um, time is money and this time spent learning about formularies will eventually translate to money saved. Um, so let's begin. Uh, Jessica, first things first, how can someone go about in finding these formularies? 
Great question. Um, each insurance company has many different types of healthcare plans. So first you can go to your insurer's website and log into your portal. Look for a tab link that says formulary. It may say prescription or preferred drug list. Now each insurance company may have a different name for it. But second, you know, if you're if you want to find a quick way to get a hold of your formulary, you can look at the back of your insurance card and call the number for help with any questions you may have in getting a hold of your particular formulary. That sounds uh, pretty easy. Um, so what you're basically saying is that you just can't Google that information. Is that correct? That's correct. I learned that the hard way. Um, each insurance plan has a specific formulary for that plan. So if you Google the insurance company name, more than likely what you're going to see is just a general formulary, not your specific plan. So that's really important to take away. That's, that's uh, good to know. Uh, so what exactly is a formulary, Jessica? Good question. So I think of a formulary as many things. It can tell us a lot, um, but a formulary is basically a list of prescription medications covered by a patient's insurance plan. Um, as I mentioned, it may be called something different. It could be called a, a prescription drug list or a drug list, but they are one in the same. And we argue that patients who can read their formulary may hold the best kept secret in navigating their care. So we'll dive a little bit deeper later on, um, but as to how this will become a valuable tool to you, but it is a very important one. So what you're saying is that it's basically a book with all of the drugs or medications that your specific insurance plan covers. Is that right? Yes, yes. Um, but there, but there's much more to it. Also, it's important to note that although some insurance companies do send you a physical copy of this, your formulary, you should be able to access the information online, as we mentioned earlier, with the different methods um, that we spoke about. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, these other things that I've been mentioning. What does the formulary tell us? We know the formularies tell us about medications, but they also tell us which medications may require more steps for you and your healthcare professional to take. Often these are noted in abbreviated terms in the formularies. It also shows patients how much medications are expected to cost. Remember, time is money. This is where the cost implications are. But what's important to know is that insurance companies sort the medications they cover into different financial buckets. They call these tiers. These are very different from one insurance plan to another. So it's important that you look at these in order to figure out how much the cost of the medication will actually impact you. That's interesting. So what you're saying is that each insurance plan might charge more or less for the same medication. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Uh, it's wow. not a one size fits all model when it comes to formularies and costs. So what we're going to do today um, to make this easier is to look at two different examples of two different formularies and compare how each defines their drug tiers or their financial costs. So we'll call these two formularies insurance company A and B. So insurance company A has a list of six tiers and insurance company B has a list of only four tiers. So let's look at insurance company B. Tier zero does not have any out-of-pocket cost in this example. So some examples of a tier zero could be um, oral contraceptives, vitamin D, folic acid, and others. And tier one is the least expensive, and it usually includes the generic medications. Tier two is a bit more expensive and includes the preferred brand name medications. But tier three, going beyond that, is even more expensive, and it includes non-preferred brand name medications. Tier four, now this is the most important tier we'll look at today, because it usually covers drugs that are prescribed to patients living with chronic illnesses. So it typically is the most expensive for patients and often called specialty drugs. So um, these typically require special handling. Now, if we look at insurance company A, you might notice that instead of a specialty drugs being in tier four, they are now split into two extra tiers, which is tier five and tier six. So again, not all formularies are alike. Right. 
So what I'm hearing um, is that looking at your drug formulary can give you a sense of the preferred drug your insurance company is willing to pay for. Can it tell us anything else that your insurance company requires to get these medications? So here's the hidden secret about formularies. All the information you need to know is actually there. You just have to know where to find it. So, the, so to answer your question, um, let's start with abbreviations. So abbreviations tell us what's required. There are some abbreviations that are very important for you to know, some of which you may even recognize. The reason it is so important is because if your medication has an abbreviation next to it, it will mean you may have a challenging time accessing your medication, or you may have to wait more time before you can pick up the medication at the pharmacy or obtain it. So some examples of the abbreviations, um, as you'll see in the presentation, are age limits, quantity limits, specialty medications, which we mentioned, and onward. So your formulary will have an appendix as to what these abbreviations mean, but they're really important to observe. Right. Uh, you mentioned that there are a wide variety of abbreviations in, inside these formularies. Are there any more important uh, abbreviations than others to keep in mind specifically for for someone with a chronic disease? Yes, yes. Um, so there are many abbreviations that we can discuss, but just be mindful, each patient is different. So one um, abbreviation may be more um, important or impact a patient differently than the next. However, what I want to do today is go over three common abbreviations to keep an eye out for. Usually noted as PA and ST and SP as a Paul, PA often stands for prior authorization, which means your plan specifies that a prior authorization is required for your medications. Your healthcare provider will have to send a request to the insurance company for approval before you can pick it up at the pharmacy. And ST, another abbreviation, which stands for step therapy typically, or otherwise known as fail first, describes an insurance company practice that requires the least expensive drug to be prescribed to a patient first, even if a patient's phys physician believes a different therapy is a better treatment option. So SP, the third one I want to talk about, is specialty medication, which means that some of these medications can only be filled by a specialty pharmacy, such as a Walgreens specialty pharmacy or others like them. It's important to know which medications may require special handling to ensure there are no further delays in accessing these medications. Great. I'm going to give you a hypothetical on these terms in order to understand them a bit better. So let's say that I spoke to my physician and the medication that we have decided I should be on has a PA or a prior authorization next to it on my formulary. What does it mean to me? Great. I love real world examples. I think the first thing for us to understand is, is that it means to you that it is going to require an extra step before you receive the medication. So we know that. We want to plan for that. Your physician understands that there are steps that need to be taken beforehand, but you yourself have to be informed so that you can ensure that there are no further delays. For instance, as in, let's go over a real world example. I just spoke to a patient advocate who found out that their treatment required a PA, which is, as we've learned, a prior authorization, and she had to call her doctor's office. The insurance company then had to keep calling and the patient had to be involved along through the process. So the only reason the prior authorization actually went through was that the patient read the information from their formulary, they knew this extra step was required, and they began to involve themselves in the process. That's great. And she found this out through her formulary, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you just mentioned, it's important to be informed in order to prevent delays in your treatment. And it seems like it is also very important to be persistent. Um, so Jessica, what are the steps that you recommend that a patient takes in a case like this? I recommend patients check their formulary, as we've been talking about. Talk to your doctor to make sure that all the paperwork is submitted. And as you mentioned before, Persistence is key. Right. Okay. So 
Moving on to the second abbreviation you mentioned, what can you tell us about step therapy or, as you said, uh, fail first? Right. Um, as mentioned before, step therapy requires that a drug preferred by the insurance company to be given to a patient first, even if a patient's physician believes a different therapy is medically in the best interest of the patient. So meaning a patient must try and fail before their insurance company will pay for the medication that was originally prescribed by the patient's physician. Can you show us an example of how these terms look in different formularies? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we remember, we talked about insurance company A and insurance company B. Here they are again. Um, these are two examples with medications that have these terms next to them. So if you have insurance A, you would need a prior authorization as indicated by the PA abbreviation. However, in this case, if you have insurance company B, not only would you need that pesky prior authorization, you would also have to fail on other medications before you can even pick up this same medication. Well, I can see that they also have different tiers and it's the same medication. Yeah, yeah. Insurance company A lists the same medication as tier four while insurance company B lists the medication as a tier five. So we can infer that the cost may be higher with insurance company B for this medication, even though it's the same medication with extra steps. So I just wanna hold right there and make sure that this is well understood. When you're deciding which insurance company you wanna sign up for, or which insurance plan, this is exactly why understanding how to read your formulary can impact how much money you would have to spend for the year. That's very important. Um, so this is for when your medications are covered. Now let's go with what happens if the medication you and your physician decide you should take is not even listed on the formulary. Is there something that a patient can do? Yes. So first, don't panic. Um, if it's not on the formulary, it doesn't mean that it will not be covered by the insurance company. But what it does mean is that you will have to ask your doctor to call up your insurance company and request that this go through the prior authorization process, as we talked about earlier. So if your doctor is able to show that there is a legitimate request, your insurance company may actually cover it. So it's really important to take these steps. Great. So it seems like understanding how to use uh, and also talking to your doctor about prior authorization could help you get access to treatments that might not otherwise be possible. Exactly. That is where persistence comes in again. Um, when it comes to a prior authorization, I'd like to note that if something is denied, you can always appeal. A great example of this um, comes from one of our other patient advocates that got denied for treatment and had to request an appeal. Otherwise, um, some folks may know it as a peer-to-peer -peer, so that her treatment could continue. But if she had not been involved, she would not have had the treatment or potentially faced extended delays in her treatment um, that were initially denied. So it's really important. Great. This has been very informative. Thank you for taking the time to walk us through formularies and why they're so important. But what the main takeaways that you would like to leave us with today? Absolutely. Um, I know there's a lot of information, but trust me, using a formulary will save you time and money, not to mention have an impact on your well-being, which is why I think we're all here listening today. If you hear nothing else, get a hold of your formulary, which is again, your secret weapon into navigating and accessing care. Remember to either call the number on the back of your insurance card or look up your formulary on your insurer's website for your specific plan. Um, definitely look up your medications that you've been prescribed or ones that you may be prescribed to learn if your medication requires extra steps, such as the prior authorization, the step therapy, or access to a specialty pharmacy. So perhaps even more important than anything else, remember to advocate for yourself 
every step of the way. Ask questions, take notes, all so you're more informed and stay active in the process. This really makes a difference in accessing your treatment more efficiently rather than waiting and potentially suffering the consequences. All very good points. And finally, where can we learn more? Yes. Um, so visit the 50statenetwork.org, which is part of the Global Healthy Living Foundation, to find out more about this. On our website, we have a fantastic tool, which is the Patient Guide to Healthcare. You will be able to review what we just covered here today and more. It will also go over how to get insurance if you currently do not have it. And it includes real life lessons from patients, as well as how you can avoid things that they've experienced. Um, you can also learn more about step therapy that we talked about on our website for more details on each of the state's step therapy laws. Great. Thank you once again, Jessica, for walking us through this. I think it was very helpful and you explained it in a way that is very easy to di digest, especially a, a topic like this. Um, and as always, Everybody that's listening in can seek support from all of our GHLF staff at any time on these issues or others. Our emails are on the screen, and we'd also like to thank Sanofi for their support in making this presentation possible. Um, it's uh, Thank you very, very much for calling in. And once again, uh, those are our emails. Please feel free to reach out and any questions we'd love to help you with. Yes. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Great. Thank you so much.